today we are counting down the top 10 most venomous spiders in the world. My name is Richard, this is the Tarantula Collective, and let's start off with number 10, the Yellow Sack Spider. Yellow sack spiders don't get much larger than a half an inch, and they build silk tubes in leaves, under stones, or in the grass. Cherichanthium inclusum can be found throughout the United States, Mexico, and South America. They are venomous spiders, and they're often found living in forests, gardens, and occasionally even in our homes. This spider's venom is a cytotoxin that can produce necrotizing lesions, but such lesions rarely occur in bite victims. Redness and swelling at the site of the bite are the most common reactions. Yellow sack spiders are primarily nocturnal and actively hunt throughout the night rather than using webs to catch prey like most spiders. As its name implies, the yellow sack spider can be identified by its yellow to beige coloration, along with dark brown markings along its pedipalps, jaws, and feet. Though they are not considered aggressive, they have been known to bite humans when they're protecting their egg sac. The number nine spider on this list is the wolf spider. These spiders are named for chasing and pouncing on their prey much like a wolf. There are about 100 125 wolf spider species in North America, while in Europe there are about 50 different species, with some that live north of the Arctic Circle. Most are small to medium sized, with the largest being around 2 inches long. Most wolf spiders are dark brown, and their hairy bodies are long and broad, with stout, long legs. They are feared for their fast running speed, and commonly can be found in grass or under stones, logs, or leaf litter, though they may even enter human dwellings that harbor insects. Although the spider is not considered to be aggressive, it will often bite people in self-defense. Wolf spiders are venomous, but their bites are not considered dangerous to humans. The spider's large fangs cause physical trauma at the site of the bite, though the bite itself has been described as similar to that of a bee sting, and the venom the spider injects may cause itchiness at the site. This slightly painful bite, coupled with their speed and creepy appearance, can be a little unsettling. More people panic at the sight of this spider than actually ever get bitten. Number eight is an infamous species that gets a bad rap. It's steeped in folklore and old wives' tales. Number eight, is the Black Widow Spider. Latrodectus moctans, or the Black Widow, is responsible for more than 2,500 visits to poison control centers every year in the United States, and they can be found in parts of Canada, the US, and Central and South America. This is the most common member of the Latrodectus genus in North America, and it makes its home in a variety of settings. They can be found in wood piles, burrows, or among plants that it can easily use to build its web. Females are shiny black and usually have a reddish to yellow outer glass design on the underside of their abdomen. They are about one inch in size, and the males are seldom seen because they're often killed and eaten by the female after mating. They're also much smaller than the female. In addition to the hourglass design, males often have pairs of red and white stripes on the side of their abdomen. Its bite, which may feel like a pinprick on the skin, often produces severe muscle pain and cramping, nausea, and mild paralysis of the diaphragm, which makes breathing difficult. Most victims recover without serious complications. Although the bite is thought to be fatal to very small children and the elderly. No deaths have ever been attributed to bites by a black widow within the United States. Number seven is not only the largest spider on the list, but the only tarantula to make the cut, and that is the Goody Sapphire Ornamental. The Postolotheria metallica is one of the most gorgeous tarantulas in the world. Unlike the other smaller spiders on this list, tarantulas have fangs that point downwards and need to be stabbed into their prey, rather than the more common pincher-like fangs of other spiders. Most most tarantula bites are about as painful and dangerous as a wasp sting, but these fringed ornamentals are renowned for their excruciatingly painful bites. They won't kill a human, but a venomous bite can cause significant pain, along with extreme muscle cramps and spasms. In addition to the pain and severe swelling, the spider's large fangs are capable of producing deep puncture wounds in their victims that often lead to secondary bacterial infections. Despite causing no reported deaths, the threat of anaphylactic shock is a potential hazard, as with any type of envenomation. Now this next spider is related to a previous spider on the list. Though they are not as popular and feared, this spider is a little bit more venomous. So number six is the brown widow spider. Also known as the brown button spider, the gray widow, and the geometric button spider, the brown widow is thought to have evolved in Africa, but the first specimen described actually came from South America, and it is considered an invasive species everywhere else in the world. Brown widow population 
Dolphins have appeared in Southern California, the Caribbean, some states on the Gulf Coast, as well as in Japan, South Africa, Madagascar, and Australia. This species makes its home in buildings, dark tight spaces like mailboxes, as well as among shrubs and other vegetation. The spider has a brownish appearance that range from tan to almost black. Unlike other members of the genus, the hourglass markings on the underside of the brown widow is orange. Brown widow venom is considered to be twice as powerful as that of its cousin, the black widow. However, this species is not considered aggressive and only injects a small amount of venom when they bite. Now we're gonna stay within the Latrodectus genus for number five, and that is the red back spider. Latrodectus haselti is another cousin of the black widow, though it is not nearly as common. This spider is native to Australia, but it has spread to New Zealand, Belgium, and Japan through grape exports because they often build their nests and webbing inside the bunches or on the leaves of grapes. The species is widespread throughout Australia, living in all of the continent's varied environments, except for its hottest deserts and coldest mountaintops. They can also be found in urban areas, frequently making nests in garages, shacks, and homes. The redback is identified by the prominent red stripe and hourglass-shaped mark on its black-colored back. This mark is more noticeable on female redbacks than on males. Redback spiders are not aggressive and are more likely to play dead when disturbed. But a female spider defending her eggs is very likely to bite. Bites also occur when the spider climbs into shoes or clothing and becomes trapped against your skin while you are getting dressed. Both male and female redbacks are venomous, but most envenomations primarily result from female bites. Less than 20% of all victims bitten are actually envenomated. The venom is a mix of neurotoxins called alpha latrotoxins, which can cause pain, sweating, rapid heartbeat, and swollen lymph nodes. This spider can moderate the amount of venom it injects, and the severity of these symptoms often depend on how much venom is delivered. More than 250 redback bites are treated each year in Australia, many with anti-venom. Researchers and physicians don't all agree on the effectiveness of the redback anti-venom, with some studies indicating that it was not effective in treating symptoms or relieving pain at all. But either way, a death attributed to the venom of a redback spider hasn't occurred since 1956. This next spider is probably one of the most feared species in the United States. Coming in at number four is the brown recluse spider. Its hemotoxic venom destroys the walls of blood vessels near the side of the bite, sometimes causing a large skin ulcer. Researchers in 2013 revealed that a protein in the spider's venom targets phospholipid molecules, which make up a good portion of cell membranes and transforms these molecules into simpler lipids. The wound that is produced may require several months to heal, and it may even become infected, which could lead to more serious health issues. Deaths from brown recluse spider bites are rare and typically only happen to the very young and very old. Most brown recluse spiders live in the western and southern United States. They're not much larger than one inch in size. The brown recluse is easily recognizable due to its light brown appearance, as well as its black lines that look like a violin, which is why the brown recluse is sometimes referred to as the fiddleback spider, the brown fiddler, or the violin spider. This species has extended its range slightly into parts of the northern United States, making its home in caves, rodents burrows, and other similar environments. The brown recluse spider may also make its home in the undisturbed spaces of buildings, such as in attics, storage areas, crawl spaces, and wall or ceiling voids. Symptoms of a brown recluse bite often develop within two to eight hours, with necrosis beginning several days later. Fortunately, serious bites from a brown recluse spider are very rare, as they're not known to be aggressive, and they would much rather run and hide from humans, which is why they're called recluses. Number three might be the most feared spider in the world. I get a lot of requests to cover this species in my videos, but I don't own one. I really don't ever want to own one, but we're going to talk about it today, and that is the Sydney funnelweb spider. The Sydney funnelweb is a highly venomous species of spider from the megalomorph order that is native to eastern Australia. True to its name, the spider is predominantly found within a 100-mile radius of Sydney, Australia. With a relatively large body that's glossy and dark in coloration, it can range from blue to black. Found mostly under logs and local plant life, the spider is mostly terrestrial and favors moist, sandy areas. Sydney funnelweb spiders contain highly potent doses of venom that are extremely dangerous to humans if left untreated. Interestingly, the smaller males have the more potent venom. The spider's venom contains a powerful compound known as delta atricotoxin, and they like to latch onto their victims and bite them multiple times. So full envenomation is common with symptoms beginning less than an hour after the bite. The bite is extremely 
extremely painful at first due to the large fangs of the spider. Common symptoms from the venom include muscular spasms and pain, difficulty breathing, confusion, disorientation, dizziness, excessive saliva secretion, and even loss of consciousness. All bites are considered medical emergencies and require immediate hospitalization. Although antivenoms exist to counteract the funnel web spider's bite, rapid treatment is required for best results. Since the introduction of the antivenom, no fatalities have been reported since 1981. Coming in at number two is a very popular spider, and that is the Brazilian wandering spider. This is a highly venomous species endemic to the tropical regions of South America. Also known as the armed spider or the banana spider, this species is extremely large, growing over five and a half inches, and can be easily identified by its hairy appearance, along with its dark, linear stripes that cross its back and its brown colored body. They got their name because they wander around the jungle floor by night, and since they don't make a web, they are found resting in the daytime in banana plants or termite mounds. Its Latin name comes from the Greek for murderous, which suggests they are pretty deadly. Brazilian wandering spiders are sometimes said to have the world's most toxic spider venom, and they're one of the few spiders known to pose a threat to human life. This spider's venom contains potent neurotoxins known as PHTX3 that inhibit glutamate release, calcium intake, and glutamate uptake in an individual's neural synapses. Upon biting its victim, the deadly venom causes muscle spasms as well as breathing difficulties, eventually resulting in paralysis and asphyxiation if left untreated. The venom is also known to cause extreme pain, swelling, and inflammation throughout the body. Potent enough to kill a mouse with a single bite, the Brazilian wandering spider's venom is quite harmful to humans, with several documented cases of human deaths reported in recent years, but mainly just among the very young and elderly. Some sources suggest, though, that only 2% of bites from these spiders result in the need for anti-venom as a treatment. The truth is that the venom of the Brazilian wandering spider is extremely potent, but it's not particularly good at injecting it into humans. This is because they have a relatively small mouth and they're not able to inject a large quantity of venom into the human skin. And finally, the most feared, the most dreaded, the most venomous spider in the world coming in at number one is the six-eyed sand spider. The six-eyed sand spider lives in the deserts of South Africa. It's closely related to the recluse spiders, and its Latin name actually means murderer. It hunts by burrowing into the sand, then launching itself at unsuspecting prey. Recent studies have shown that the spider's venom is more lethal than any species of spider in the world. Their venom is a powerful cytotoxin, able to kill a rabbit in five hours. The venom is both hemolytic and necrotic, meaning it causes blood vessels to leak and flesh to decay and die. Common symptoms of the six-eyed spider bite include severe pain, nausea, abdominal pain, hemorrhaging, and skin necrosis. But little is known about the spider's effects on humans, as only two human cases have ever been observed over the past 100 years. In one case, the victim lost his arm, while the other died from massive loss of blood. Despite these terrifying facts, there have been very few spider bites attributed to the six-eyed sand spider, mainly because it lives in deserts that are inhospitable to humans, with no form of anti anti-venom in existence, bites from these spiders are generally believed to be extremely serious and similar to the effects of rattlesnake bites. This is why this six-eyed sand spider is considered the most dangerous and venomous spider in the world. Even though you would really have to go out of your way to put yourself in a position where you would be in danger of actually getting bit. If you enjoyed this video, check out my top 10 most dangerous tarantulas. And as always, I appreciate you watching. Subscribe if you want to see more. Thanks for buying Tarantula Collective merchandise, and I will see you next Tuesday. <laughs>